Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I'm Caillou Ninja, and I'm super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's cut to the chase. Today, we're going to talk about being authentic. One of our words, being you. Yep, that's it. Be yourself. Sounds simple, right? Very easy. But not always. Each of us are different, and it's important to honor yourself, who you are as a person, and what makes you, you. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. My guest today knows all about what it's like to be yourself. Alex Vachetti is an autistic writer and local fundraiser, a volunteer, and someone who loves his family and his friends. Most of all, he's a person who tries to be a good soul to everyone he meets. Alex is originally from Terrytown, New York, and now, but now lives right here in Richfield, Connecticut. He has written a book called The Lonesome Boy and the Blonde-Haired Angel, which is now available on Amazon. His book is about the isolation that can, that can come of being autistic and how to overcome it. Alex works at the Richfield Playhouse and the social media, the local social media. And so many, and he met so many interesting people in his life. Let's get to know this guy. Alex, so great for you to be here. K- Kaya, thank you very much for having me here today. So here's how it works. I'm going to give you a couple of questions. Part one's going to be talk to me, tell you, tell me your story. Or as I like to call it, talk to me. That's it. I'm ready, man. Part two and three, we're going to talk about later. So, Alex, talk to me. What? Well, well I, I've been on the spectrum my entire life. I've been blessed to live in an amazing uh, community here in uh, Connecticut. I know so many incredible, amazing people who have helped me in my journey through for so many years. And I'm just so immensely uh, grateful just to have all the opportunities I get just because of uh, so many people who have uh, come into my life on a regular basis. Wow, amazing. That sounds of you have a very interesting and grateful life, Alex. That, that that a lot a lot of people say that. You know, I'm am just immensely blessed with all the directions that my life has taken me. You know, like you know all the uh, all the good, and then of course uh, you know even even with the even with the moments that are not so good, you you take the lessons from it, and then you just you know uh, you just go you just uh, you just live your best life uh, possible, and uh, just uh, just grateful for all that's uh, come my way these past uh, 33 years. <laughs> that's good. But seriously, your family, your friends, they should be really proud of your accomplishments. Oh, uh, that I uh, I am very immensely blessed to have the most amazing community around me who uh, who uh, who support me and uh, help me and lend a hand to me in the most amazing, beautiful of ways. And I I, I pray that the, I pray that the uh, that that uh, can be uh, given to all of our uh, sisters and brothers on the uh, spectrum because. Because that's what's important, to have a good, enriching uh, community that uh, continually uh, loves and supports you. Yeah. Well, guys, that sounds, sounds amazing. So here's the follow-up questions. When were you diagnosed with autism, and what was the journey like for you? Well, in the beginning, uh, what happened was when I, I was I died that's when I was young, living in Terrytown, and the story goes, um, my mother took me into the doctor's office, and uh, I was just looking down because a lot of people on the spectrum they have you know eye contact, you know, but they struggle like with looking like sometimes they can go, go this direction, that direction. I and feel you, man. It's like it's like the it, you know it's like it's like nervous ticks and things like that. Yeah, and, it's like ner- it's like you get nervous and you want to like look somewhere else. Like, see, see around the area. Absolutely, exactly. I do that when I walk. When I can walk, I do like this. Oh, I do that all the time. And my, and my dad just keeps saying, look up, I know. look up, and oh, I do this. Oh, my gosh. Like, uh, I, I was uh, like, I'm not I, I, these, these days when I'm doing that, it's like when I'm, if I'm, like, walking down the street, like, if I'm, like, if there's, like, any, like, cracks in the sidewalk or, like, lower, it's like. Um, yeah, like, see, it's like a pattern. Yeah, yeah like you, a don't, pattern. you don't want to trip over your feet. It's, like, so mesmerized. It's kind of a bit mesmerizing for me. Like, see different patterns of the floor and the, like, sidewalk. It's, like. Ex- uh, ex- ex- exactly. And it's uh, so when I was young, I was uh, the doctors saw that and they were I was diagnosed uh, being on the autism spectrum. And that's what started, uh, you know, did, did a, you know, was in special education classes uh, th- all throughout uh, school, elementary school on to uh, high school. And it's what led me to uh, uh, see things in a different way and le- led me to live in a, you know, a different way. And it's um, it's and that's what uh, that, that's basically how it. Uh, how it began, just uh, just from the eye contact alone. That's how it all started. 
Well, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Also, another question. What is your biggest challenge as an autistic person? Oh, goodness. Where where do I start? I mean, I think um, probably the biggest challenge would probably be just um, the anxieties. We There's a lot of anxieties. There's a lot of, you know... Want, wanting to do things because we go at our own paces. We all try to do things, you know, at a very, uh, sometimes we want to do things at a very rapid rate. Sometimes we want to do things at a very slow, steady rate. And so, and there, and, and a wide variety of different, and it's, uh, bro, that's so, con that's so freaking convenient because that's, yeah. That's one of my biggest challenges too, the anxiety. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like, and I've, uh, and I've been very, uh, on, uh, and I try and be as open about my anxiety as I can to everybody who Even have a therapist about it. I keep talking about it. I've talked about my family about it and it feels so rough. It's like, but sometimes I feel like that nobody in my family like gets the whole thing. It's like only I can, can understand yeah. it because- and not a lot of people can understand autism. It's like an enigma, a puzzle. Yeah, it, exa exactly. Because it's like uh, unless you've been, uh, unless uh, people who live uh, with the on the autism spectrum, spectrum. they are uh, right. they have their own way of looking at things and hearing things, and it's um it's all different. They all we all have our own autism abilities. Exactly, and we all live in our very interesting worlds that uh, we, no, that nobody else can explain but it's ourselves. Ever, it's ever changing. Ever changing. It's, it's Changing like the world is always changing, always, always like forming in different shapes and sizes and and many mesmerizing pictures. That's right. And it's very challenging for us to like stay focused about it. Oh my gosh, yeah, my focus level. Like I could be talking about somebody or uh, another thing. I I just I just thought of is that um, if I'm engaged like in a talk like with somebody, uh, sometimes like uh, my mother would say to me sometimes. Um, because uh, you, you ever heard the phrase, you know, uh, when you hem and you haw, like uh, you tr like when you don't like uh, when it takes a while to get to the point of something. Like if I'm talking to somebody about so it, it would take me a long time for me to get to like the point of what I'm trying to say to somebody, and, the, and it would go like on and on and on. And so that's something I'm still, uh, but but it's all part of the work in progress. And the older I get, the more I start to uh, get a hold of my um, autistic tics. Yeah. So. How was middle school for you? Uh, middle middle school was good. Uh, I had one year of middle school in Terrytown, and then when I moved to Connecticut, I had one year at, uh, there, and that was uh, and, and it was a and it was a good experience. I mean, school for me was a very interesting experience. I mean, uh, I mean, for I think school for anybody on the spectrum, it, it, it all varies uh, uh, all right. differently. School's a nightmare for me. Middle school is tough for me. Yeah, I'll I'll be I'll be frank about my own school experience. I mean, I met some amazing people going to uh, in the schools, both students and teachers. But it was hard. Like it, it was the work in the curriculum, trying to keep up with you know getting this assignment done, that assignment done, getting this test and that test and all that. It's um, it's a it's 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 a lot. Just like you know, forced onto you. Yeah, no, right? It's 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 really. I mean, it's. I mean, I, I mean, granted, I understand because again, it's like uh, they want to like you know that they want they want all the, us students to succeed, but it's like uh, it's uh, but it it can be a little bit overwhelming, and that that definitely um, it it it, all, it always seems uh, fitting that uh, I discovered what the what the word anxiety meant when I was uh, not in middle school. By the time I got to uh, high school, it was uh, I began to realize because it's um it can be very overwhelming at times. Yeah. So what inspired you to write your book, The Lonesome Boy and the and the Blonde Haired Angel? So I, I me and my family, we moved down to Florida together. And during that time I was there, I met this extraordinary person, and her name is Rini. And um she was my pastor's wife. And let me guess, she was blonde hair? She was blonde hair. She was. She was. And we just developed a connection. And I developed a connection with her that I never really developed with uh, too many uh, people. I it's um it's I mean, it's unbelievable to see like how different things were because I met uh, my angel in uh, 2011 and it's been over uh, thir so it's been over 13 years. And to see how far I've come, you know, because 
She she became a very close. Uh, she guided me in my uh, like in my way of thinking. She was my she's my spiritual mentor, and uh, she guided me in my uh, uh, she grounded me in my faith because my faith is definitely what helps me to keep me uh, grounded in my uh, everyday life. And she and and I want and I wanted to pay tribute to it. It's uh, in the best way I knew how in writing uh, in writing my book, and it was. Uh, it's and it's a blessing to see that that continues to make an impact to this day. It was released about uh, six years ago in 2018. And it's still making an impact. Wow, man, that sounds amazing. Sounds like your book was a really good hit. Uh, I'm telling you, man, it was. Um, everyone has been so gracious to me about it. I mean, people. I mean, I've had signings uh, different places, and I've. Um, and I've given the copy of my book to so many different people, uh, so many different uh, famous people over the over the past, you know, uh, few years. It's been it's been amazing, just the uh, just the impact it's had. Wow, that sounds amazing. What did writing your book teach you? Well. It taught me it, it taught me a wide variety of different things. One of which is you know just just the process of it. I mean it's like because it's uh, I mean it's one thing just to put words to paper. It's another thing when you're putting it all together. Because uh, I mean I self published this along with my illustrator uh, Cleo, who did all the watercolor illustrations, who brought my book to such a beautiful uh, to such beautiful light. But just the process it went uh, it went through. You know from you know um, like putting it on like marketing it. Setting up, making sure, like setting up signings and uh, getting the word out there about it, and it's uh, so like a, a whole variety of different things, and just making sure that people know that it's out there because it's uh, you know it's there's so many books, there's so many different like about you know autism and th- and so it's like uh, you're diving into one huge like uh, ocean of a swimming pool when you're releasing your book out to the masses. But um, I'm very grateful for the audience I've been able to get from it. That sounds great. What else do you like to do for fun? Well, I'm I um I I love going out with my with my with my family and friends. I love uh, working uh, for uh, my jobs. I work at the um, work at a uh, amazing performing venue at the Richfield uh, Playhouse, and then I also do uh, uh, social media postings, which is always an amazing, uh, which is amazing as well. That's become like a second uh, career for me. I do postings uh, for uh, Instagram pages, which uh, have helped me to um, uh, like bring, like uh, help promote like different towns and stuff. Uh, not just here in Fairfield County, but also in uh, Westchester uh, County as well. Uh, so that's local social media that I do with uh, Brigitte Stone, and I'm uh, and then working at the Playhouse. So it's um, so I, so I'm blessed to be do a wide variety of things. That sounds great. So you said that you have met lots of cool people and celebrities. Let's go through a couple of names, shall we? Yeah, let, let's do so. Lee Ann Rhymes. Le- Leanne Rhymes in 2013. She, uh, I, I had the blessing of so the Playhouse, the Ritual Playhouse. They gave me the Arts Volunteer Award as uh, because I've been blessed to be an usher there for over uh, 12 years. The first job I ever got anywhere, and I'm still there to this day. And what, the day that I got my arts volunteer award, Leanne Rhymes was the was the headliner for at the event. So I had the blessing of after I got my award, I took a picture with her backstage, and uh, and she was very gracious uh, to me. And what's even re- and then she ended up coming back to the playhouse just last year. Uh, which meant that uh, ten years after she last performed, which is when I was honored, she came back to the playoffs. So it, it's amazing how it all comes full circle. That sounds great. So Jim Gaffigan, Adam Sadler, Gene Wilder, aka the original Willy Wonka, and Joe Pesci. Uh, oh my goodness! Well, Jim Gaffigan and Adam Sandler, I had the blessing of meeting the uh, at the exact same night. So there's this organization that's based in New York City that's uh, helped, uh, but that's done by uh, Robert uh, Smigel. It's called Next for Autism, and there was a benefit last year at the at the Beacon Theater in New York City. And I went there with my buddy uh, Tim Hurley, who's a, who's a, who's a who's Adam Sandler's uh, screenwriter, actually. And I'm uh, blessed to say he's a very dear friend. 
And we were, and I got to meet Jim Gaffigan before the show, and then we had the I had the pleasure to meet Adam Sandler after the show, and they were all very gracious to me. As a matter of fact, uh, driving back home from the city back to Connecticut, um, Adam uh, uh, Adam uh, sent a text message because uh, you know how like in cars, like you're in the car and it, there's like features in the cars so, where like you can see like text messages like in the car, like uh, notifications, things like that. Adam Sandler ended up texting my buddy Tim uh, after we had like a little exchange because it wasn't it wasn't a long conversation, but he was very gracious with his time. Like, hey, good to see you. Like, he, Adam Sandler was exactly who you would think he would be, down to earth, very chill, as as cool as you would think. Because there was all these so many cool stories about Adam Sandler. He was exactly who he was, and he texted my buddy Tim afterwards. He said, um, "Nice kid." In reference uh, to me, so that was uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, that was an amazing experience to uh, to see him. Gene Wilder, I had the blessing of meeting him three times. Um, one at a screening of The Woman in Red in Stanford, one at a book signing in Westport, and then another with a at a talk in New York City. And he was always very very gracious uh, to me, very down to earth, very sweet. Joe Pesci, uh, he was a lot of fun. I did an interview with him in 2008, and he was um, very chill, very – he was. He, we had a great talk about, like, all the work he had done. And then I got to meet him a couple of years later at the New Jersey Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony, and, uh, and he was very gracious to me. At one point, he gave me a little – Pinch on the cheek, which was like, uh, like, so, like, uh, definitely was like a scene out of one of his movies, and um, and was and uh, so many of my associations I've had to meet was because of a very special man, uh, uh, Charles Grodin. Well, and, all, and if you think that's all, there is more. Annie Halfway, Chevy Chase, Annette Benning, and those are just one of the many celebrities that this great man has seen. Mm. Uh, it, it's the most amazing. Oh my goodness! Just here, here and I mean, uh, I mean, meeting all these guys like Annette Benny, especially Annette Benny was actually someone who I gave a copy of my book to, and she was doing a Broadway show, and I gave her a copy of The Lonesome Boy and the Blonde Haired Angel, and then five years later, this month actually it happened only a couple of weeks ago, her. Her daughter, Ella Beatty, who is now in a play at the Belasco Theater now called uh, Appropriate, which I, if you haven't seen Appropriate, uh, by the way, at the Belasco Theater, I highly recommend you go check it out before uh, the run ends. It's a, uh, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing show, and it's, uh, and so when after, so afterwards, I went uh, because the entire cast came outside. I gave her a copy of my book, so. Unbelievable! Five years after I give a copy of my book to her uh, to her mother, I give a copy to her, which was absolutely amazing. You know what it reminds me of? The Caillou Merch the website. Go to the Caillou Interviews website and, go, and buy some merch. We have T-shirts, hats, mugs, and also and we have T-shirts with my with my top three number one Caillou Ninja News quotes, and also one of my and also much more that you can buy at the Caillou Ninja News website. Down for a reasonable price of five dollars to fifteen. Awesome! Awesome! Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's been incredible. I mean, uh, you know, and then Chevy Chase. I met him at the Playhouse. He was very gracious, and I also got to meet um, oh, just so many. I mean, uh, but it's uh, but like two, but two of my closest uh, friends. Uh, I would have to say were Charles Grodin and Ed Asner. Those are two of my closest. Uh, that they're they're definitely two of my closest uh, male companions, and they they mentored me, and they. Opened up there, opened up to me, and we had a lot of fun times uh, together. And they were so uh, they were so gracious to uh, give me like one on one time with me. Uh, I had the blessing of knowing Charles for over uh, over fourteen years, and then I've had the blessing of knowing Ed Asner for about uh, uh, twelve years. A um, l- little bit of a little bit of a sad note. Both of them ended up uh, passing within three months of each other in, in twenty eleven, but. They're always still with me, and Charles Grodin's uh, birthday is uh, he would have been um, he would have been uh, oh goodness he would have been eighty nine uh, tomorrow. So happy happy birthday in heaven, uh, Chuck. Always thinking about you, buddy. And um, and it's and it's it's just such a blessing. I'm, I'm, I just it's been incredible just being able to meet such amazing 
uh, people who are who are these amazing uh, legendary entertainment figures. Well, you just answered a question more without me telling it. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna replace it with another one. Will you add me to your celebrity friend list? Oh, um, oh, oh, oh! Are you kidding? We've been we've we go way back. Like uh, we when we first met at the Danbury Library together when we were oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we were together we, when we uh, because you you were giving your remarks and I was giving my own remarks and it was on a uh, right on right on the steps. So I was in like the top five, top first five. That's it. Like uh, and uh, and and, I, and it's a, and it's a one and it was a wonderful. Uh, so we uh, I've had the blessing and just seeing all the how the with uh, with how this uh, channels are growing and it's uh, and it'll continue to grow and it's uh, and it's uh, and it's amazing to watch, man. So, who has been your biggest inspiration in your life and why? Oh goodness sakes! Uh, I to I gotta be I I it's hard to pick one. I mean, uh, I got I gotta get I gotta go. I mean, it's there's just so many who have come on a regular base. I mean, Rini, my angel, uh, Charles, uh, Chuck Roden, uh, Ed Asner, uh, Allison Stockel, uh, who uh, was executive director of the playoffs when I was uh, hired there. Um, um, Lori Beresford, Elaine Cox, who are two of my uh, philanthropic uh, heroes, uh, who uh, I, I do a lot. I do a lot of volunteer work and try and give back, and they inspired me to uh, to give back. And then, uh, and just so many others as well. Uh, my social media boss, Brigitte Stone, uh, just um, and uh, my, they're, they're, they're just so many to count. There's just so many amazing inspirations. I I couldn't just list one. So. What do you want to say to your family right now if they're watching this? I, I want to say thank you for continually uh, supporting me and for continuing to uh, like uh, support me in, in the most amazing, uh, beautiful ways. And uh, and uh, we'll, and we're all in this uh, together, and we'll just continue to uh, uh, survive, thrive, and uh, just bask in all the blessings that uh, come our way. And say if my family's watching this, I love you. Stay in school. I love you. And if my you know, my future children watch this, stay in school. So, let's do the third question. Yes. Who haven't you met and what would you love to meet? I would love to meet Bruce Springsteen. I have never had the opportunity to meet him yet. I would love to uh, like like s have like a few minutes just to hear his um, his way his views about things, like the way he expresses himself through his music. Uh, he's my favorite musical artist. How was so? You graduated in high school, middle school, and elementary school. Yes. You have a very great, a very great chance of success. So, so, well, how was finding a job like? You know, I was I was very blessed that I started. I first started working when I was uh, seventeen, and uh, it was all thanks to it was a combination of both. Um, uh, Ch Charles Grodin uh, opened the door to the Richfield Playhouse to me. He introduced me to my playhouse boss, Allison Stockel, and they together. Uh, Is it actually a house for you? Can play in? Uh, yeah, it's like the the yeah the Richfield Playhouse. It's like a 500 seat performing venue, and we get everyone from music and comedy acts. And I um, you actually like play in there? Uh, um, you know, well, you know, I've never. Yeah, you can like uh, all these different uh, varieties of different shows that come in. Like no, I mean, like play tag and stuff. Uh oh no, no, not like that. I mean, it's uh, it's more like you know concerts and things. So it's oh, like but, but, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah so it's like you I know. I heard about the playhouse. I was actually a playground. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although with like it's like it's the most it's an incredible event like right in our own backyard like we, we, it's like a 500 plus seat theater and I've um and that's and so I would and so that was what led me to um and I'm just immensely grateful that uh, both of them it's uh, so I was very I'm praying that so many of our sisters and brothers who are on the spectrum will have that open door like the playhouse open to me because it's um it can be difficult a lot of times. We, with all the success stories that we see, I mean, uh, some there are those who are still, you know, looking for work, and so here's praying that there'll be an open door for like a job opportunity, work opportunity, just like it happened with me at the playoffs, and also with social media. With uh, Brigia Stone, who's my social media boss, opened up uh, to me and led me to do postings on Instagram, and so I manage pages and post content, reels, things like that, and it's um. So I've been I've been very blessed. So, with all 
of all of you accomplished so far, what haven't you done that you want to do? Oh goodness, I that that's an amazing question because there's been there's just been so much. I've been I've been blessed to do so much over these past. I mean, I'll be um. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'm, I'm in my mid thirties these days. You know, I, it's, I've already like from, you know, I, from everything from, you know, writing a book, doing social media, ushering it to like, uh, what, I mean, you know, I, I guess, I guess just to see what other blessings come my way. Cause like if anything I've learned, especially these past with everything that's happening with this and that is that you never know what's going to happen and you just have to continue to rely on, you know, you know the blessings and, you know, just the faith that um, there'll be amazing open doors that will just happen for you. So question two of part three. And yes, we're already at part three. Wow. You're the first one to go part three this oh, fast. Oh, my goodness. I think so. Yeah. yeah. We should really check the schedule. Yeah. What gets you excited about the day? What drives you? Motivates you? Oh, well, 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 well what really motivates me is that um, being in a community where I'd be able to like run into so many people who I know and love. Like when I wake up, uh, when I when I like leave the house to go out to like the town or something, or go out to lunch with somebody, or if I'm walking to the playhouse, I have um, I'm blessed to be able to walk to work every day, which is fantastic. And uh, weather pending, like if it's like rainy or snowy, I, I call them like a, uh, someone help me, uh, someone helps me over. But um, being able to see so many that I know, you know, just to uh, and just to spend you know time with them, that's what um, they never cease to help me get out of bed in the morning. So. What advice would you give to a young autistic person? Okay, me, maybe, maybe me. My, my, my advice would be just to go where, go where the love and support is. Go to those who uh, believe in you and support your dreams and just, uh, and don't let them go and just have them like to stay uh, and, uh, and humble yourself. In this in this crazy uh, crazy world that we live in, uh, we just we have to continually just you know not uh, not get too uh, not get too crazed with all the chaos of the world and just continually just uh, ground yourself, humble yourself, keep yourself peaceful, and um, you and you'll be amazed just how many open doors will come. Oh, yeah, Alex, this is the last deep question. Yes. How important is it to be yourself? The utmost importance. Uh, it's uh, 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 you know, um, I think um, I think it was Oliver Wendell Holmes who once said, um, "Just uh, just uh, just be yourself. Everybody else is taken." And it's uh, and it's definitely something that you know because we're all different, you know, variety of different personalities, different mindsets, different likes, different dislikes, uh, different things that make us tick and don't tick. So it's so important to be oneself, especially in a world where like, um, you know, you know, we live in a world where it seems like um, everybody wants us to be somebody that uh, that we end up uh, not really feeling like uh, we are. So it's more just to go down to like exactly as to who we are and uh, your true sh- your true self will shine because of it. Alex Vachetti, thank you so much for being here with me on Caillou Talks. I had the pleasure of having some of my amazing guests on my show, but today was special because I got to talk to an autistic person just like me who has had the same experience that I had. Alex's experiences show me that being authentic is so important for so many reasons. Being real, honest, and telling others who who you are goes a long way for, for others to understand what you're about. Too often in this world, we try to be someone that we are not. We pretend to be something or we act out a character because we think we need to in order to be accepted. My guest today showed me that that is not necessary. Alex showed me today that the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson were true. Being yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you into someone else really is the greatest accomplishment. I mean, if I want, I mean, if I want someone to understand me, I need to let them know what I am so they can know what to expect. And being real and being myself is the best way I can be authentic. If we all did this in the world, it will be a much better place. That's it for now. Thank you for joining me, Caillou Ninja, on Caillou Talks. 